Hi, Kara. Hello. Earlier this series, or sometime during the playoffs, you know, you're talking about a big stage, the best competition. You said you still get butterflies. What are the butterflies like ahead of a game seven? They're, uh, the butterflies are a little different before game seven. Uh, uh, there's a few more of them in there, I think. Uh, but it, it's uh, it's a great day. It's a great day for for sports, for basketball fans, for uh, our players, the Rockets. I mean, it's uh, it's fun and um, and it's exciting and it's uh, nerve wracking and and all of the above, but um, this is uh, it's a great great moment, great time for our team. How's Kovan today? Did you have that talk with him? No. I, <laughs> you guys need to get used to this new injury report. Like, literally everybody is on the injury report every day, so don't take it seriously. In this situation, Steve, what creates the biggest butterflies for you and for your, for your guys? Uh, it's just, you know, the fact that you know the series ends tonight and you either go home or you you move on. Um, so it's just the, the stakes are what create the butterflies. Uh, but what's important is not thinking about the stakes and the repercussions and uh, the judgment that comes, uh, you, you know, in e either way, win or lose. It's just about locking in on your job and executing the game plan, letting loose, letting it fly. Um, see what happens. What was your impression of the other series last night? Did you watch it? Uh, I did watch it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just great competition. You know, I'm so impressed with Boston and and, uh, and their young players and what they've built and uh, amazing uh, amazing season for them. And then uh, you know, LeBron. LeBron is LeBron. He was he was awesome. How's Andre doing? Uh, he's doing okay. He won't play uh, tonight. Yeah. Chris Paul's a game plan decision does it change anything for you guys, or you just? No, I mean our, our game plan stays the same, and we'll, um, you know, we have uh, they don't. It's not like they change their offense when he's out there. It's more just an individual tendency thing. But our guys, um, uh, you know, they they have the scouting report down, and um, we'll see what happens. Steve, how important is it's been this way the entire series? But you mentioned earlier in the series that you saw a lot of the problems that you saw in the regular season when it comes to fouling. Do you, do you feel like you're in a good place where we know that the whistle is going to play a factor in this game? Like uh, I think I fouling? think the officials have done a great job throughout the playoffs. You know, it's one of the things I love about the playoffs is that um, yeah, there, there's not much BS. You know, there's not uh, there's not a lot of the um, sort of um, trickery that goes on in the regular season and uh, you're getting the best officials night after night and um, you know you got to earn your trip to the line uh, there's not going to be a lot of ticky tack stuff and uh, that's good for us uh, yep. when we're disciplined and we don't reach um, that puts us in a, in a good position so we've got to continue to do that um, keep them off the foul line that's been been a pretty good barometer in the series for success and uh, and do all the other stuff we've been talking about too. Do you have a number for Harden as far as what's a good day of keeping him off the free throw line? We, we haven't really given our guys a number but um, it just feels more like um, what kind of fouls they are you know there's gonna be some that you have to commit but you know when he's driving in and somebody reaches and James does his, his swoop move and, and gets underneath your arm um, you know, we've watched enough tape now to know we can't can't do that. So it's, uh, it, you know, you, you kind of feel it. Um, he's going to get to the line some for sure. He's that good. But I don't have an exact number or anything. You spoke about Boston. What's your impression of uh, Cleveland getting back to the finals again? Uh, no, we, we have a game tonight, so I'm not talking about anything else. What's your, what's your max level of minutes you maybe go with your main guys tonight? Uh, 49, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I think the last couple games you've seen kind of uh, how both teams are approaching this. You know, you can buy a few minutes here uh, and there, and you have to, I think. I mean, it's too difficult to play at this level uh, and go the full 48 for um, for most people anyway. And uh, you, you want to buy, buy some minutes here and there. So it sounds like you won't go the full 48. Could you do the full 24 in the second half, maybe? Uh, again, it, it's a feel thing. It depends how the game's going. It depends how the players look. I think um, obviously we have kind of our our big four that we play heavy minutes, and um, each guy is a little different in terms of the ability to to deal with fatigue. And so I wouldn't treat them all the same way. Um, and we can feel it. We can see it. And um, generally, we'll we'll just take a guy out for a couple minutes and get him right back in.
guys are obviously both high-powered offenses, but how, did, how have you seen the kind of the grinded out nature of this series evolve? Well, both teams are also great defensively. I mean, that's the biggest difference with Houston this year uh, compared to in the past. They're much better defensively than they've ever been. They've added pieces uh, that make a lot of sense to play the way they play with the switching. You know, PJ and Babute, uh, you know, Capella's gotten better with that. And, and we've been a good defensive team for years. So uh, this, is, this is how the playoffs are supposed to be, you know. Um, I don't think anybody uh, in, in our locker room expected these games to be 125 to 121. Um, defense, uh, you saw it in last night's game in Boston. I mean, at defense in the playoffs, um, it gets tougher and tougher to score no matter how talented you are. Everybody's tuned in. The regular season is a, it's like a different sport, you know. Preparation is uh, much less. Uh, there's much less of it, and so you can sort of catch people off guard a little bit. Not much catching any, anybody off guard right now. Andre's a competitor. He's somebody that you trust. How is he handling missing a fourth straight game and now the season on the line? Uh, he's frustrated. <clears throat> he's totally frustrated. Um, and if he could play, he would play. But um, he just has not, his body has not responded to this point. We're still hoping that over the next few days, if we're able to win tonight, that, uh, that he will make some improvement. But um, he just has, has not uh, gotten where he needs to be. Has he had any role on the bench? You know, Chris Paul seems to have had a pretty significant role. What, what has Andre been doing during the He's, yeah, Andre's uh, been great on the bench. He's, he talks to our guys all game. And, He's uh, one of our uh, vets. He's one of the smartest players I've ever been around. And he, uh, ever since I've been here you know, over the last four years, he's always made a point of taking young players under his wing and teaching them you know, what's, what's going on in the NBA game. And he's, uh, he'll do that during the game tonight, too. Coach, you mentioned about the defense of Rockets. So when you guys were struggling on offense, was that because of the defense of Rockets were so good or just because like you guys were not being careful or you know sloppy? It's always a combination of both. You know, you always uh, have to give credit where it's due. Uh, in this case, um, you know, Houston's defense and their uh, the, the roster that they've built um, is impressive to, to defend at a high level. And then we had to figure some things out and um, and play better offensively. And um, so we'll see we'll see how it goes tonight. Great, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thanks.